Well, hi everyone. Welcome to another Joganet video interview. And uh, today we'll be focusing on one of the major trends during this pandemic uh, amid the global gaming industry, which is uh, esports betting. And um, for that, we are joined today by Rahul Sud. Uh, he's the CEO and co-founder of Unicorn, one of the most uh, innovative and disruptive esports betting companies, in my opinion, at least. And so, welcome, Rahul. Thank you for for having us today. Um, Thank you for having me. Sure. So, uh, well, we are seeing now that major uh, traditional sports events are are returning, um, and lockdowns around the world are coming to an end. So. Which in which stage do you think of this uh, we are in this uh, esports growth that we've uh, that we've been seeing in the last few months? Uh, how do you think this will unfold in the net, in the coming months and and into next year? And how exactly has Unicorn leveraged this uh, this esports industry boom uh, since the pandemic began? Sure. Um, look, you know, I'll start with the last part. Unicorn has been. Um, building since, you know, for six years now. We've been building the most comprehensive um, betting and entertainment platform for esports and video games in the world. Um, we do, we, we allow people to bet on spectator events. We have virtual esports. Uh, we have streamer betting. We have skill betting where people can bet on themselves in video games like that they love to play like Fortnite and League of Legends. We've really expanded our offering. Um, but with that said, the pandemic was basically a lens, a look into the future. It, um, you know, it shut down everything. It shut down all sports, uh, it shut down casinos. Um, and, and the only operators that were doing somewhat well were, were those with digital offerings, online offerings that, um, that, that, ha that have content. And, uh, and so for us, there was, there was clearly, you know, major growth. We had lots of users joining, you know, we've had more users than never before joining the platform and that sort of thing. Um, but I would say this is just a look into the future. You know, you, you started off by saying that, um, that, uh, you know, things are opening up again and it's getting back to normal, but it's not going to, it's, uh, they're not opening up again. Um, you know, they're going to shut down again soon, I think. Um, I think that sports are changing big time. I mean, I just got a letter from the Seahawks, uh, the football team in, in Seattle, saying, uh, you know, that there likely may not be games this year in, in the stadium. Um, so, you know, so the, the idea that everything will go back to normal is just not the case. I, I think this is kind of a new normal for a period of time, and companies need to be ready for it. Um, and they need to understand that um, things aren't just going to magically shift like that you know, until there is a vaccine and, you know, that sort of thing. And it's put out in mass. This is going to take some time. And, uh, and most companies were not ready for it. See, yeah. Um, and well, I, I was reading yesterday, uh, an esports insider report that, uh, 25 over 25 million were raised in, in esports investments in July, just only in July. Um, and we have seen recently some companies, some esports betting companies such as uh, Esports Entertainment Group and Lackbox um, moving to taking decisions to go public and, and, and even acquire and acquiring other uh, companies within the entertainment industry. So um, I'd like to ask you if Unicorn, if you are, you're, you're considering similar steps and in terms of investments or different kinds of partnerships, uh, acqu acquisitions too. What is your, your outlook regarding this, uh, this, uh, this great investment opportunity that we're witnesses, uh, witnessing these days? Yeah, so f first of all, our team um, it has, has done a really good job of building a, a, a commercial offering, a, a B2B offering of the Unicorn platform. And um, we have a number of uh, partners that are signing up with us now to, to launch um, Powered by Unicorn Experiences across the world. Um, because, you know, there's most bookmakers are not prepared to run esports as well as we are. So uh, by us offering it to them, they can offer it to their customers and we're, and we're happy to do that. So, so that's one thing. So from, the, from a business standpoint, our commercial offering is ready to go and we're, we're ready to partner with, with anybody that's a good operator in, in regions that they, that they operate in. The number two thing is on the investment side. Uh, there's there's a ton of interest. Um, you know, I, I think probably one of the things that really spiked it was um, DraftKings going public 
and you know and their valuation has been just incredible um and you know people look at unicorn and they realize that we we have uh, we have technology from front to back developed our, ourselves so we own our entire back end we own our front end we've developed really unique ip and technology uh, in the space um so you know there's there's a real future here um so yes we are looking at um a number of different possibilities um for unicorn going forward i think this year is a is a defining year for us um we're going through some regulatory stuff uh you know um that we're, we're getting through at the moment uh and we're and we're talking about a number of different um opportunities to to go forward and raise money or or to uh you know there's 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 a lot of different opportunities that have come our way since this pandemic started so yeah just exploring them now all right all right um well one of the main questions that everyone seems to be asking is if is esports can take over from traditional sports and in, at some level, maybe in terms of acquisition, um, in user acquisition for, for traditional companies or best acquisition products. Um, do you think uh, this, this, any of this could, could happen in the short term um, that esports betting companies can take or will take a, lead, a more leading role uh, or, or if, traditional gambling companies will will take that position so look i don't think uh your your standard esports betting company can do that um i think uh what you have to remember is that traditional sports um you know people who bet on traditional sports don't necessarily understand esports but with that said people who bet on traditional sports like you know nba or major league soccer or you know premier league whatever they bet on they play video games And, you know, they, they might play uh, FIFA or they might play Madden or, you know, NFL or whatever, or sorry, uh, uh, NHL 2K or whatever that they play. They, they may play those games. And if they do, they can actually bet on themselves on Unicorn. And because of that type of play, because, because we offer those types of products that are sort of more mainstream than, say, hardcore betting on esports, we can onboard people onto the platform much easier. Um, So it really depends on the offering. I think if you have an offering that speaks to regular people, then yes, we could be a leading, uh, you know, a, a leading uh, indicator or a leading kind of um, customer acquisition vehicle uh, for, cu for uh, customers who are waiting for sports to come back. Uh, and then we can onboard them and teach them about esports over time. Um, you know, if, if, if anyone tells you that, uh, yeah, esports is, is definitely going to take over sports and we're going to be the biggest gambling, you know, for in the world on esports and that sort of thing. It's, it's nonsense. I mean, at the end of the day, you need both to kind of work hand in hand together. And, and I, and I do believe that um, esports is, is absolutely becoming more relevant and it's growing and, you know, that sort of thing, but it's still pretty nascent. It's still growing. It's still going to take time. Uh, in the meantime, you know, onboarding people who watch traditional sports onto esports, uh, you need to take them through a journey. And I think Unicorn's done a really good job of doing that. Sure. Uh, well, it's it's also related to this uh, the, to these concepts uh, because we we've been we've uh, recently spoken with uh, RTS Munity CEO Paul Granowski um, in a in a video interview too. Uh, he said that um, some of the major betting companies already missed the train with with esports because they haven't invested in in promoting them to to the new generations to Gen Z and and, and millennials. Uh, especially, um, and that even the esports betting companies that, that are focused on, on esports, they are not, uh, they are still uh, not showing some um, innovation features that they need uh, to attract these these young people. So, uh, do you think this any of this is 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 happening today? And 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 if this new landscape that that we are seeing uh, could bring a significant turn in in this situation? He, look, he's 100% right when it comes to traditional operators not being ready. Uh, you know, we've been working with traditional casino operators, the largest ones in the world, for, you know, five years, <laughs> you know, uh, and, on various partnerships, you know, trying to build them up so that they can get on board with us, all sorts of things. And, you know, it took the pandemic uh, to happen before they, before they really started calling us and saying, we need to do something quick. You know, and they're sort of in a panic situation. They furloughed 90% of their employees and they want to get something out. It's, it's insane um, that they're not ready. 
they, they, the reason they're not ready is because they weren't willing to invest in a new space because they're, 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 they're run by traditional um, CFOs who are looking at short-term gains and not long-term strategy. Um, you know, these people, are honestly, like I, I hate to say it, but in many of these uh, operations, they should be fired and they need to bring on new, you know, new thinking, younger people maybe who understand this space more, who understand this audience better, um, to help change the, the the way they think about the future, you know, it, it was um, it was it was strange to me when I spoke to one of the largest casinos in Las Vegas, and they told me that um, they had no door locks on the front doors. Uh, you know, when they had to shut down for the pandemic, they couldn't lock the doors because they they've never had to shut the doors since you know they opened in the 1950s, um, and uh, you know they just were not prepared for this whatsoever. So, so I hope that answers the first part of your question. And the second part with regards to esports operators, online esports operators, I, I really, you know, I, I mean, obviously I'm biased. I mean, I'm the CEO of Unicorn, but, uh, you know, the people that we have, my, my business partner, Carl, and uh, our development team, you know, the, these are people who really understand the sports betting space, but they also understand the esports and the video game space. Esports betting, esports in general, is much bigger than just esports. There's also the video game aspect of it, and there's a very large audience of people who play video games and who are older and who, who, who like to bet on their own skill and that sort of thing. And so I think that um, the unicorn offering, because it's so broad, it's given us a lot of opportunities to onboard people in various ways. Um, you know, we have, we have virtual betting, which is 24 hours a day. We have esports betting. We have streamer betting where you can bet on your favorite streamers. And then we have various types of skill betting where you can bet on your own skill. The, the beauty of esports and video games is the, the, uh, the, the, the blue ocean for, for wagering experiences is, is gigantic. And there's so much more opportunity in, in, in wagering on these things versus, say, traditional sports. It's, it's unbelievable. And since you mentioned this, uh, this issue with land-based casinos, uh, before uh, we've been talking to to analysts from Spectrum Gaming Capital uh, recently, and he said that uh, the problem, the main problem he sees with esports is uh, is is on the profit profitability side. I mean, he sees no, he finds it hard to to find companies that are making that are really making money with esports, um, and he also sees uh, casinos as as the best place to to host esports events, and he says that casinos are actually very interested in, in the esports industry. So the question is, um, what do you think this, uh, what, what would be the best path forward and, and approach in terms of, uh, of a potential relationship uh, with, between esports and land-based casinos, considering that, that casinos that uh, would bring in young people that maybe that, uh, they don't necessarily con um, consume their products. I mean, uh, they, they, they spend money on, in casinos and, and it, all the amenities that we usually find there. Yeah, let's start with the, uh, the first part of the question. You know, people who bet on or who are, who are operating esports companies are not profitable or, or bookmakers who's, who have esports offerings aren't making profit on it. Um, kind of true, but not true. Uh, from, from our standpoint, everything we do is margin positive. Everything from, from our sports book to our virtuals, to our streamer betting, to U-Mode, it's all margin positive. Um, what we need is scale. So, so we need to bring on more customers on, onto the platform you know, to use this stuff. Um, you know, we do make a margin. Customers do make money, which is great. Uh, but, but overall, it's a, it's, a, it's a net positive business. Um, so so we, launched, uh, we launched a B2B offering to be able to do that and to allow other operators to, to, to white label the unicorn platform. With regards to casinos, you're absolutely right. Casinos are interested in the space, but they don't get it. Um, you know, one thing that's sort of a bright light, if you fly over Las Vegas and you see the Luxor with the eSports, you know, arena, it's, it's really neat that they have this 30,000 square foot nightclub that's set up as an eSports arena. The thing is, you can't gamble in it. <laughs> like, what the hell? You know, and I've been saying this since the beginning. I talked to MGM, I'm, guys, you, you've got this amazing arena there. Why is there no gambling there? Unicorn should be the one powering all of this. Like we've got the software to power that entire place where you could walk in, you could load up a game of, of Fortnite or whatever you want, and you can place a bet on yourself. And, you know, we're happy to work with the regulator to get licensed. Like there's lots that we can do to help power these places. Setting up a, an esports arena that, that's just a place to babysit your kids 
is not a good idea. I, I'm afraid it just isn't. If you really want to do this, you have to do it right. You have to put bring in the software and the teams that understand the, the, the wagering side of things. You have to have viewing parties for esports events. Let people bet using an app. I mean, you want to talk to this audience, do it properly and call us. We'll, we'll be able to help you do it. And that's the point that I've been trying to drive for years. And I have to tell you, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a very fun business, but the, these, you know, a lot of the traditional operators are, are just too slow to, to move forward and they need to change that. They, they, the, the CEOs who, who get through this pandemic have to just completely change everything. And, uh, and, and force this type of innovation, regardless of cost, they should just go make it happen. Because I promise you, if they don't do it now, they're going, they won't be here 10 years from now. They aren't talking to their future customer. We are. So, so, so work with us to help enable, you know, and make you guys successful. Sure. Um, the last topic I'd like to address today is the, well, you mentioned Las Vegas uh, and, and in Nevada, we have seen uh, many many esports uh, events uh, approved by the regulators to be uh, to place wagers on uh, in the last months and new jersey is moving forward with a, a new legislation there so um do you think these two jurisdictions could trigger if, if they move on with this uh encouraging esports betting could trigger or or or, or be become a key push for for the esports betting expansion across the US. Um, and also I'd like to ask you if, if, if this is an opportunity to, to uh, educate a wider audience in, in esports. You should have said that may, most many people, not only traditional betters or, or, or I mean in, people in general that, that maybe don't know uh, esports and, and also crypto, uh, cryptocurrencies trends, including, including that. Um, so do you think this is the time to, to educate those, uh, this wider audience that is so, outside so, the radar? Yeah. So first off on the regulators, um, it's nice to see them, you know, moving forward and, and improving more events. Um, you know, I, I never really, uh, the, 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 the Nevada model of event by event approval was really cumbersome. Um, uh, New Jersey is, is, uh, to me is, is a far more progressive regulator. Um, they've done a really good job. They're very fast in, in, in approvals. Uh, they're smart. They, they, you know, just like Nevada, they're very smart regulators, but, but in New Jersey, they're willing to kind of push the envelope a little bit um, and, uh, and take, take risks, I feel, sometimes. And that's a good thing because, you know, if you make a mistake, you can always fix it. Um, and, uh, but, but look, at the end of the day, this is good for us. The, the, the fact that they're, they're both pushing this is good for us. Because as an operator, we have multiple commercial operators who are trying to get licenses in these jurisdictions, use our platform to be able to offer esports to their customers. And that's great. We'll pick, we'll pick, you know, a couple of partners, we'll go out and we'll launch, you know, um, uh, sportsbook type betting on esports in these, in these jurisdictions. Um, with regards to things like cryptocurrency and, and whatnot, I, I think the U.S. is too far behind, uh, you know, to, to really grok that, uh, to be honest with you. The, the, the lack of uh, regulatory clarity in the U.S. with regards to cryptocurrency makes it very difficult for a company like ours, uh, for example, to be able to, you know, to, to go to regulators with this. They just don't, they, they, they don't have the appetite for it yet. Eventually they will. Everybody will. You know, as you can see now, Uh, Bitcoin is getting far more uh, mainstream um, attention, more banks are getting involved, more financial institutions. It'll eventually come around to where, you know, accepting cryptocurrency and that sort of thing becomes more mainstream. Um, we're going to continue doing it because, you know, we know that a younger audience likes that. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and eventually we'll be, you know, we won't be so far ahead of the market. Right now, I would say we're probably three to five years ahead of the market, which you know, it, it can be good, it can be bad. I mean, if you're too far ahead, sometimes it's, it's detrimental to your business. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so we, we, we offer it because we know it's coming, uh, but, you know, eventually these things will collide. Yeah. Sure, well, well, we'll be following very closely this, the esports e growth in the US. So I hope we'll, we, can, we can have your insights in a further interview opportunity with you. So thank yeah, you very one, much. One more thing I want to yeah. point out is sure. uh, on the skill, on the skill side, um, you know, we operate in, I think, well, I mean, around 40 states in the U S um, you don't need uh, a license for the skill betting products like the U mode where you bet on yourself. 
um, because it's a skill. It's like fantasy almost, but in fact, it is a skill. Um, you know, playing a game like Fortnite and becoming one of 100 is a skill. So we offer that in 40 states. Um, when it comes to things like, um, uh, you know, spectator betting, where you require a license and you're, you know, you're doing odds betting on, on events, um, you know, we are, we are working with the regulators. We will get approval in these, in these locations. The thing is, in the U.S., you need to have a land-based casino or a partnership with a land-based casino. And we're just sort of, um, we're picking because there's so many opportunities. We're just, we want to be really careful who we partner with. Sure. That's very clear. Uh, thank you very much, Raul. And I hope I'll, I'll see you in a, in a very soon to, to keep having your insights about this very interesting thank topic. Thank you. I appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Yeah, you have a nice day. See ya. You too. Bye-bye.